Elizabeth Pena. I'm the interim dean and vice president for academic affairs at the Graduate Theological Union. And it's a real pleasure for me to introduce you to Dr. Jorge Cañizares Esguera, the 30th annual Surjit Singh lecturer in comparative religious thought and culture. So as I said, this is one of our first hybrid events. Thanks to Sabrina Kennedy and Melissa Haddock for their work on all matters technological and logistical. And welcome to all of you who are actual people in the actual room and welcome to all of you who are joining us on Zoom. Uh, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. So please type, put that in the chat if you get a chance to do that. And also use the chat to put your questions in and I will uh, retrieve those questions later to pose to Dr. Cañizares Esquera. Uh, for those of us physically here at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, California, I'd like to acknowledge that the GTU stands on the ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo speaking Ohlone people, successors of the Verona Band, and the territory of Huchun. This land continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people and other descendants. The initial Singh lecture, entitled The Telos of Religion and Culture and Interpretation, was presented by Dr. Surjit Singh himself. The late Dr. Singh was Professor Emeritus of Christian Philosophy at the San Francisco Theological Seminary. He was Dean of the Seminary from 1972 to 1978 and was Professor at the GTU from 1962 to 1988. And I might add that the seminary's current Dean, Dean Ocker, is here today, so thanks for joining us. Dr. Singh's publications included Prophetic Realism, Preface to Personality, Christology and Personality, Communism, Christianity, Democracy, and a Philosophy of Integral Relation. Dr. Singh was born into a Sikh family in Punjab, India, and converted to Christianity at age six, 17. So his commitment to comparative religious thought and culture was derived from personal experience. Before arriving in the Bay Area in 1951, Dr. Singh served as National Secretary of the Student Christian Movement of New Zealand, India, Burma, and Sri Lanka. He held the position of Professor of Systematic Theology and Philosophy of Religion at United Theological College, Saranpur, India. As a Bay Area resident, Dr. Singh was active in community affairs, including a Rotary Club partnership, where he worked on a project that brought clean water to 100 villages in the Ganges Delta. The GT remembers Dr. Singh tonight in presenting the annual Surjit Singh Lecture in Comparative Religious Thought and Culture. So I'm thrilled that Dr. Jorge Canizares Esquera is here to present this year's lecture, The Virgin Mary as Warrior, Marian Models of Women's Religious Experience in Colonial Latin America. Dr. Canizares Esquera is based at the University of Texas, Austin, where he is Alice Drysdale Sheffield Professor of History and director of the Institute for Historical Studies. After attending both college and medical school in his hometown of Quito, Ecuador, he relocated to the University of Wisconsin where he earned his MA and PhD in the Department of History of Science. Throughout his career, Dr. Canizares Esquera's work has shown that we can't really understand global history, intellectual history, the history of science, the history of ideas, religious history, without understanding Latin America. He challenges us to rethink not only historical narratives, but the very frameworks we use to examine history. Even as we construct new narratives, we fall into familiar paradigms that privilege an intellectual status quo. He staked out this ground in his first book, How to Write the History of the New World, Histories, Epistemologies, and Identities in 18th Century Atlantic World, 2001. This was around the time we first met. I had the privilege of reading the book's galleys with my graduate students. I don't know if you remember that, Jorge, but I do. Uh, and we could see that we needed to put aside some of our accustomed ways of thinking and broaden our perspectives. Since then, Dr. Canizares Esquera has written eight additional books and edited volumes so far, and in the neighborhood of 100 book chapters and articles. In Puritan Conquistadors in 2006, he demonstrates that a similar religious discourse characterized both British Protestants in North America and Spanish Catholics in South America, centered on the notion that Satan had established a footnote in the so-called New World. So the mythology of the Puritans in New England must be considered in broader context. I'll resist summarizing the rest of his impressive body of work. 
or telling you about the significance of his current archival research. But I will point out that Dr. Canizares is committed to bridging the gap between academic and public history, and certainly doesn't shy away from contemporary issues and advocacy. In 2019, he co-authored the Hispanic Equity Report, which brought to the fore inequities for Hispanics at UT Austin and offered recommendations. The report's findings continue to reverberate throughout academia. Dr. Canizares Esguera has received quite a long list of prizes and other honors. He has generously advised many graduate students who are becoming well-known historians in their own right. In fact, his mentorship was recognized with an award from the American Historical Association. He has been granted multiple fellowships and residencies and lectures widely. And he was in Spain just a few weeks ago. So I'm so glad that he is here in Berkeley with us tonight. Here is Dr. Canizares Esquera to talk about the Virgin Mary as warrior, Marian models of women's religious experience in colonial Latin America. Jorge. Well, thank you, Elisa. Um, it's really uh, an honor to be here and uh, a pleasure to be, uh, to see Elizabeth and Ted after some 20 years. God. Um, uh, thank you, Sabrina, for all the help, logistical and otherwise. And um, thank you everyone here for uh, attending this lecture. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna share the screen. Uh, and I'm gonna begin reading. Uh, in whose Bible is it? The late Jaroslav Pelikan repeated what has been for centuries a commonplace, quote, it was the printing press that made the Bible as book, a cultural force in the common life of European societies in a way and to a degree that had not been true or even possible before. The Reformation produced growth, a growth in bible center piety, the lives of the saints and the countless holidays and feast days devoted to their commemoration, especially the many days consecrated to the legend of the Virgin Mary, slowly yielded to a church year and a devotional calendar shaped more directly by the Bible. This was published, this was written in 2005. That the Dean of the historians of patristic medieval and early modern Christianity, both Latin and Orthodox, would repeat this common place should surprise no one. The historiography of the Reformation has made these ideals canonical. Churches long organized around old altars where to sacrifice the body of Christ became pulpits where to read sola scriptura, scripture alone. Print and Reformation transformed the church and stripped the altars. It is not difficult to show how deeply misleading Pelican's statement really is. He contrasts the Bible center piety of the Reformation to a piety quote of commemorations consecrated to the legend of Virgin Mary and quote of the Latin church. But a glance to the cult of Mary shows that Mariology itself was a byproduct of biblical commentary on the Old Testament on the Hebrew, on the Hebrew Bible. Take, for example, a typical post-Tridentine Catholic image of Mary produced in Osborne in 1750 by the engravers Jonathan Baptist Clover, Joseph Sebastian Clover, as, and Joseph Sebastian Clover, as one of some 57 illustrations of the litany of Loreto of the Jesuit Franz Javier Dorn. This image circulated all over the Spanish monarchy in Asia, Africa, Europe, and America. Lord, have mercy. Kiri Eleison, as a pious supplicant kneeling before a monstrance. This is the supplicant, this is the monstrance. And an image of Mary and his son, and, and her son. Uh, Caribs, in turn, hold the tent. 
The image rests on top of a flight of six stairs, which in turn are flanked by three pairs of lions. The lions to the left, to the left, to the left, rip off a serpent, a body, and a pile of bones. Those to the right hold the crucifix, a lily, and a book. The passage from Hebrews 4.16 frames the composition. Adiamus ergo confiducia, athronum gratia ut misericordiam consequamur. Let's us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. The supplicant addresses Mary saying, dic ergo te quod soror mea cis. Say you are my sister and that my life may be spared for your sake. There is nothing in this image that does not pertain to the Old Testament. The body of Christ displaying the monstrance appears as the Ark of the Israelites. Christ, the new covenant, has replaced the law of Moses. The Torah, meant to be kept in the Ark. Mary appears as a tabernacle of the Israelites. Pregnant with the body of Christ, Mary, the tent, held by cherubs, becomes the tabernacle within which the Ark rests. The relationship of Mary to Christ, one of container contained, is repeated in the image of the stairs. They are simply a reference to the throne of Solomon as described in 1 Kings 10, 19, 20. Quote, the throne had six steps and the top of the throne was round behind. And there were armrests on either side of the place of the seat and two lions stood besides the armrests and 12 lions stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom, end quote. Mary is Solomon's throne in which Christ, the wise king, sits. Lions to the left guard against death, heresy, and Satan, whereas lions to the right revere Christ, Mary, the lily, and the word of God, the book. Finally, the supplicant addresses Mary with the words Abraham uses in Genesis 12, 13, fearful that the Egyptians would kill him to capture the beautiful Sarah as bounty. Abraham asks Sarah to lie and tell the Egyptians that they are actually brothers instead of husband and wife. Say you are my sister and that my life may be spared for your sake, end quote. In Clover's image, our Virgin Mary is Abraham, Sarah, Solomon's throne, and Moses' tabernacle that holds the ark. Clearly, this example demonstrates that no, quote, commemoration to the legend of the Virgin Mary, end quote, is possible with Sa outside an Old Testament center exegesis. The same could be said of the medieval cult of saints that Pelican himself, a sympathetic historian of the cult of Mary through the ages, failed to see through the, rhetor through the rhetoric of such powerful historiographical category as the Reformation is remarkable.